This is episode 65 of the Rise Up Podcast. We're a morning radio show hosted by Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life, a network of stations across New York and Pennsylvania. Our podcast is a weekly conversation that will help you think and grow in your faith. If you haven't already, subscribe today so you don't miss a single episode and find out more about our show at familylife.org. We're giving out smiles that you can wear all day. This is Rise Up on Family Life. Our work situation here at Family Life is, uh, I'd say, quite different uh, than many people's in that we uh, work, maybe you do too, though, in a uh, a Christian organization. But not every organization is a Christian organization. However, uh, we still need to act Christ-like, whether we're in a Christian business uh, or place of of work or a non-Christian place of work. And I I hate to use that word generally, but I think you know what I'm talking about. You still, there are still things that, how do they know and how do we act and what do we do? And so how to show your faith at work is an interesting and many, for many people, a very challenging uh, thing to talk about. I think one thing that you can do that shows your faith, and this, this goes for whether you work at a Christian environment because we're not perfect, or in a totally, I'll say, godless environment, is how you respond to what other people say. Right. I'll even say, if you laugh. Like, think about that. People use humor a lot of times as a as a way to kind of come together, as a thing to kind of gauge who thinks like them, who's got the same sense of humor as them. But And that, that can be a good thing. Obviously, it can also be used to put other coworkers down. It can be used to laugh at things that God finds actually well, really obscene or really whatever. So I found in uh, uh, at a time where I uh, worked in like kind of a, a, a local campground setting, not like a Christian camp, just doing maintenance outdoors and things. You know, the jokes get said, the things get said, the kind of talk. It's like, oh, this is <laughs> this is the furthest thing from clean here. Do you chuckle to look like like to not bring attention to yourself? Because that's what everybody else is doing. And to be the only one who's not laughing right. will like put a, a spotlight on you and maybe mm-hmm. a spotlight you don't want. Do you kind of awkwardly sit there and be like, kind of uncomfortable with this actually? You don't even need to say that. But like whether you're laughing or not does show to other people. You don't have to be a jerk about it necessarily. Mm-hmm. You can just say you can just show that and how you respond to what other people think is funny and another one really simple this one (laughs) won't put as much a spotlight on you um certainly not in a christian environment probably people will know what you're doing if you stop before you eat and close your eyes and stuff your coworkers will get that if you work in a christian environment but if you stop before you eat and you pray when you're in a secular workplace that kind of lets people know oh this is one of those faith people Mm -hmm. oh this is one of those church people that might not like share the gospel with them right then and there, but even little things like that that are visual can lead to conversations. It's cool to see how little things can can have a big spotlight kind of effect, and you're not going out of your way to do that. It's been 13 years that I've worked in ministry at Family Life, so I don't always remember what it was like before that. Uh, but during the pandemic, just for fun, I got a job at the local grocery store. It was kind of one of those things where I was like, I wonder what it's like to work there. And, you know, they had pretty flexible hours and I could work in, you know, the afternoons and on the weekends. And so I did. And it was interesting to be out of a ministry environment. It kind of gave me a different perspective for what people are struggling with in the world. And it also gave me an opportunity to have conversations about Jesus. Now, generally in that workplace, you know, faith talk, Christian faith talk is pretty frowned upon. But there would be opportunities, you know, like where uh, one of my coworkers would say, you're always so happy when you come in here. And I would be like, huh, well, you know, I don't know if it's happiness as much as joy. Uh. And I could talk about my source of joy. And I could talk about how even if I had a really bad day and a bunch of things went wrong, you know, that you have this eternal hope in Jesus. And that allowed you to just kind of be cheerful. You know, one of my coworkers had done uh, like one of those ancestry DNA things. And she said, I think um, there is some there's some Jewish heritage in my background. And so when Jewish holidays would come up and she'd go, wait, what does this one mean? Because I became known as like that girl who knows the Bible. (laughs) And, you know, I would say, oh, you know, no, that's different than Passover. What Passover is, and we had like a whole conversation about Passover. Now, 
Jesus was like the ultimate Passover lamb in a very matter of fact way. But then there also was kind of this like secret club that started to form. Like people would find out that you were a Christian and it was like, oh, I'm a Christian too. Where do you go to church? Hmm. You know? And so we began to kind of have this little like secret, you know, oh, that person's a Christian, that person's a Christian, that person's a Christian. And it was good because there would be some accountability there. I definitely noticed some unfairness. And I don't think that it's made up. I mean, the Bible tells us that we will have trials and the world generally hates Jesus and his followers. And so I wasn't surprised when different holidays would pop up, Muslim holidays, and they would talk a lot about like the religious connotations. But when Christmas came, it was all about Santa. (laughs) When Easter time came, it was all about the rabbit. You know, there wasn't Mm -hmm. really ever a focus on Christ. And it was funny because there was a meeting um, with a bunch of people who had their anniversaries, their work anniversaries at the same time. And one of the girls, shared about being a Wicca. And she um, was talking about how she would love to read people uh, tarot cards, you know, and people were kind of like, oh, yeah, that sounds really neat. And it just disturbed my soul because I thought, man, if in the same meeting I brought up Jesus, my savior, I would have probably ended up in the HR department, you know? And so there was definitely some of that. We have to be careful not to get cantankerous about it, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, to just keep shining the light no matter where you are. Pray for those conversational opportunities to pop up and just look for ways to represent Christ. You said, Tim, and you've touched on it too, Therese, that uh, what I take from that is you have the ability, you individually, some things you can't control, what's going to go in the workplace, whether no matter what the environment, but you can control your reaction to it and what you say. I had only been, and Therese, you had mentioned, it's like, you know, it's been so long since I'd worked outside of family life and outside the ministry. I'll never forget it. I can I can still picture it. I had only been here at family life for maybe less than a month coming from a non, you know, Christian organizations. And and as you know, if you don't know, Family Life has a lot of different areas of ministry, not just the radio, but there's performing arts and there's different parts of the ministry. Uh, and I was out, we were getting set up in the uh, gym area uh, out where a lot of different activities go on. And it was in a transition state where one uh, group of Family Life was ready to set up for something that was coming up, an event in a day or so. But another part of the Family Life organization was also setting up in the same area for something to tear. Anyway, the problem was their times overlapped Hmm. and one couldn't do what they wanted to do at that time that they had planned for. And I could see, I'm again, I was brand new here and I was like, well, I know what would happen here where I used to work if something was a disagreement. And so I was like, I was aside, I was kind of like watching how this would act, react, what would happen to clashing? What's going to happen? Is there going to be an argument? You know, what's going to happen? And they, the two leaders of the two uh, organiz- in the two different departments got together and said, hey, why don't we try this and maybe we can do this or we can come back in 15 minutes or we, it was just all like, I stood and I was like, to myself, I'm like, wow, hmm. wow, that wouldn't have happened where I just was working for the last 20 years. And so my point of that whole thing is that you have the ability to control your reaction to a situation. Not every situation is going to be great in the workplace, but you can stand out uh, no matter where you work by, yes, uh, turning away wrath with a soft answer, right? Not having that harsh word that stirs up anger. You can do that. You have the ability to do that no matter what you do and no matter where you work. You have the ability to shine that light of Jesus just depending how you react. You're not late. You're right on time. And we're glad you're here. This is Rise Up on Family Life. I was reading this blog, like the top 10 things you should always have in your car, you know, in case of an emergency. Steering wheel. (laughs) Number one. one. That is helpful if you want to stay on course. Good, good, good thought there, Tim. Wasn't on the list, though. Uh, Number one thing on the list, I was really surprised because I just used mine the other day. (laughs) Brakes. Again, good try. Not on a list? Uh, nope, not on a list. It was the tire pressure gauge. Oh. 
Okay. Like, yeah. you know, the little thing yes. you put it on the stem of the tire right. and it, right. it sticks out the thing and it tells right. you your pressure. Yep. Now, if you're wondering what that should be at, mm-hmm. if you look inside your driver's side door, right. there's a little sticker there mm-hmm. and it tells you what the recommended pressure for your tires is. So when I was driving the other day and bing, the low pressure light came on mm. right after I had had my winter tires taken off. I was like, oh, something sus here. Yeah. So I pull over, take off the little stem caps. Ch- ch- I check one of the tires is a little low on pressure. Right. I'm like, well, look oh. at me. And so I <laughs> put eight quarters into that machine. Remember right. the days when air was free? Yeah. Uh, and uh-huh. I pump up the thing and I check it again and I put a little bit more in and I check it again and, I, and I'm finally good, cap it off. And I was, I'm standing there in the gas station parking lot. I'm thinking, and do you think that I could launch a car maintenance YouTube channel? Like, I feel like I'm at that level <laughs> yeah. of knowledge. If you do, yes. if you do, could you have Tim and I on as other guests? Oh. Because we would say, hey, besides this, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'd go with what? A, uh, a seatbelt. Se- well, no, you that's said another. steering wheel. Oh, well, that's a good one, too. Yeah. Steering wheel. Brakes. You could on use our brakes. next yeah. episode, we'll show you how to put gas in your car. <laughs> Reminding you that God is in charge today and every day. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. I can go to any youth baseball field tonight, likely, even though I haven't been to one in years. And here's some parent from the stands yelling this. They're going to say, hey, how old is that kid? I mean, he can't be 12 years old. He has a full beard. I'm 12 years old, sir. <laughs> I'm 12 years, show me his birth certificate. I mean, it happens every year. We had Norm Craig when I was growing up. Norm was on our team. We were 12 years old. And Norm. Norm. Norm, he was shaving already. Anyway, Norm. my point is it happens. And they were, the same thing is happening right now in Bluebell, Pennsylvania, Montgomery County Community College. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, a college is okay for a kid to, yeah, to have a, a you know, look sure. older. Sure. But the fans are going, wait a minute, what's the coach doing playing? No, he's not the coach. This college baseball team has a guy on the team, Jim. Hey, how old's Jim? Jim. Jim. Jim's 56. What? In college. <laughs> in Jim. college. Good he, for you, Jim. There's oh, a story oh, there. There's a story yeah. there. His daughter inspired him. His daughter decided, you know, I'm going to go back to school and get her my degree. That's what his daughter said. And he goes, you know what? I still have some eligibility remaining, and I didn't finish college, wow. so I'm going back, too. And he played baseball when he was a kid. So now at 56 years old, Jim is playing on his college baseball cool. team. So that is really cool. Jim, after the game, he goes, hey, when's the next sock hop? When's the next sock hop? <laughs> what? Feel free to stick around a while. We love it when you're here. This is Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. Tim, you are the one out of the three of us that has most recently had a baby born into their family. Mm -hmm. People love to give baby advice. They do. Mm -hmm. It's usually not very helpful. What (laughs) the new family needs is love. They need support. Do you remember advice that people gave you? Like, what was the one thing that people said to you more often than anything else? Okay, so one, I'll say this, it's actually really good. Hmm. And and people, total strangers, tell me it all the time. Hmm. Hold on every moment. Every moment, don't let it slip by. Just cherish every moment. That's actually really good advice, and I appreciate I hearing that. that from total strangers. Yeah, I really do. Aw, yeah. that's very but, sweet. But, well, but there are other things where you're like, oh, okay, you can let that, you can let that Yeah, roll the off. number one piece of advice that new parents get that they actually find very annoying <laughs> is sleep when the baby sleeps. Oh, hmm. People okay. love to say that. Sleep I, when the baby sleeps. I heard- but. Yeah. Yeah. You probably heard that more than once. The reason it doesn't work <laughs> is it doesn't. because it's true. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't work. Uh, because after that new week baby checkup, uh-huh. you've got the two week old snuggled in their car carrier in the back <laughs> of your, you know, little minivan. Mm-hmm. And um they're gonna fall asleep. Right. And if you right. if you sleep when they sleep, forty five minutes later, you're gonna wake up to a baby that is wet and hungry and you are still gonna be in the pediatrician's parking lot. <laughs> so that just doesn't work. Of course we're happy. You're here. Why wouldn't we be? Thanks for listening to Rise Up on Family Life. Rise Up P.I., where the P.I. is for pretty intelligent. Solving the mysteries of the Bible, one case at a time. So there I was, eating my morning yogurt and banana, when into our office came a hairy-looking man. The script says harried. Yeah, he was that, too. Are you with Rise Up P.I.? This is a biblical emergency. Easy, fella. 
You're going to get your hair in my yogurt. When was the last time you trimmed that beard? That's the thing. I've been reading the book of Leviticus, and I don't know if I'm allowed. It was plain to see this follicular fellow was referring to Leviticus 19.27. Do not cut the hair at the side of your head or clip off the edges of your beard. I'm reading through a Bible plan for the first time, and I had no idea how many rules were in there that I've never followed. This guy was in deeper yogurt than we thought. Yeah, I'll say. Can't unsee that Fu man chewing my breakfast. We're going to level with you, guy. It's great that you're reading the whole Bible, but being faithful to God's word also means understanding the context. Case in point, do you live in ancient Israel? Um, no. Exactly. You're reading part of the law that Jesus fulfilled when he came as God's chosen one. There's one thing that God wants from you, and that's your heart, sweetie. Oh, that sounds a bit easier. Or... Is that a lot harder? Well, I won't take up any more of your time. I'll get you out of my hair now. Thanks, Rise Up P.I. All in a day's work with Rise Up P.I. Untangling the mysteries in God's word. There's that hair again.